here we are on a lovely sunny day and it is actually streaming over the waters of wherever i'm not sure but i just want to say here that this is a good problem now this is black to play and i'm finding more and more and more with my old age is it's best to work it out to fruition as it's just better and there are a few reasons why that is but um, here we without going into ramble which um, is quite good or easy for me to do here we have a number of forcing moves but can you see the point of the forcing moves so and I hope you can because there's uh, there's something really really important in working out the puzzle very very good for your chess if you want to get good at chess or better then you need to do these they're just like exercises for i've said this a million zillion zillion times they're just like exercises for an athlete an athlete needs to go on that jog or that run or that they're both the same thing blah 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 so anyway i'm going to be quiet now but it's so important exercise and for the brain we need exercise for the brain anyway it doesn't matter so i'm going to uh pause my volume and i hope you work this out black to move try and work it out in your in your own mind without any assistance including that of myself now I'm going to talk to you about this position there is a couple of obvious checks here there's even one I've just seen which is no good uh, why is rook f3 no good why is it a blunder it's actually a blunder why is rook f3 a blunder If rook f3, okay, then white has a very powerful move in queen d8 check. And as you can see, the without moving the queen back to e8, which is like sort of neither here nor there, uh, the black king only has this square to go to, okay? So the black king after queen here has only king h7 and then we can all see even though this rook is uh is thwarted from being able to enter into the play it can still support the queen going to g8 checkmate which is pretty powerful isn't it for white so one has to be very careful uh you know whatever that means uh in chess to to keep an eye out for these sudden sudden cold showers as it's called in some books these sudden cold showers that occur that you can't do anything about because they're just like you have to react to the check don't you so we have to be careful we have to be expedient but also very careful because it's like a whatever it's like a a, a crunchy not a crunchy it's like a um a stack of eggs you've got to be very very careful when you want to walk on them <laughs> sort of thing whatever so and also uh white is of course threatening just queen h6 checkmate ouch so black needs to be rather expedient but that's all good and said how then should black continue that's the thing how should black here continue and this is an extra exercise because i think it's a good one 
So if I say it's a good one, it's probably meaning that it's kind of cool how to do it. So the the serious checks are Rook F2 check. Rook H1 check, is it any good? No, I don't think so. I think that's just going to lose and White should be able to win that. So Rook F2 is a, a possible check. Queen E2 is a possible check. But if we look at Queen E2, we see that the Rook just goes back to G2. That's the only move for White. And then, okay, you've got Queen here check. But then this Queen can come back here uh, and defend itself. And then we're into a Rook and Pawn end game, really. It's no good. Okay. So, okay, so I think, you know, given that queen e2 is no good and that we have to watch out for queen d8 checkmate and queen h6 checkmate eventually for this one, queen h6. I've got to make sure I say all the possibilities, otherwise it looks a little bit lame if I miss checkmate for white. Uh, so we have to look for the, the real good check, but that's not the only thing. We don't only look for the, the the best check now because it might lead to a loss. So we need to find something. We might want to play rook back to f6 and that protects the h6 pawn and queen d8 check because the queen can't go through the rook. It's going through, it's going through this rook and it can't. So I need to go over the variations, but I also want to impress on you, uh, press upon you, that it's best to work this out yourself than to have a computer or something like that do it for you. And thank you very much to leechess.org where I can get these exercises for me and you to look at and go over. So it's all very well for me, or you, or anyone, for that matter, in this 15 minute rapid plus 10 second increment game. It's all very well to go over this position, and to, I think I was saying, just find the next move. But it's better if you can find the next few moves, just like in search of Bobby Fischer. Um, where he was told by the coach, you have to see it right through to fruition. So now we're going to look at some sort of like, kind of like, uh, what would they be called? Kind of equation the sort of um, algebra, da -da -la, -la, la la all those sorts of words I don't understand completely. But now we're going to look at some sort of like um, ge geography of this position and now I'm going to give you a big hint okay so we're going to give you a big hint no I'm not I'm going to play the first move but I'm not going to play it yet it's rook f2 check is the only real suitable one but what happens after just king we're not going to look at king g1 because queen e1 is checkmate eh so we're going to look at king h1 we can't look at rook g2 because it's check with the queen and we can't look at queen f um we can't look at queen f4 because the rook's still checking the king on h2 so we're only going to look at rook f2 and now king h1 so what's the next move is it just rook f1 to uh rook f2 to f1 check again is that the move and hoping for king g2 and queen e2 checkmate. That's pretty good, isn't it? Wow, that's it. That's it. No, it's not. So we have to look at king h2 again. And then if we go rook f2, of course. If we go rook f2 again. So it's second move. Then it's going to be... Uh, hang on. We're back to square one again. And I'm just going to go back to king h1. And if we do that too often, it's going to be a draw. But this is a win. This is black to play and win. So how do we do that? So first of all, 
We're going to go rook f2 check. I think that's the best check. I think you might agree. The queen e2 is superfluous, so it's just not, not going anywhere. We could have tried this, but this is no good either. Queen e1. Uh, because of aforementioned queen h6 checkmate, or queen d8 check, and queen g8 checkmate. So reiteration has occurred. And so here we go. We've got rook f2 check, and then clearly rook g2 isn't possible, so king h1 is the best move for white. And try to find the best move for white, or your opponent as well. It's not just about finding the great moves that you want to play, which are really, really cool, but you want to try to find your opponent's best responses as if you're white as if you're over the side of the board you're you're these guys okay you want to find the best move on the planet for them your opponent if you want to get better so we're going to go rook f2 then what happens after king h1 we we can go queen check that's not going to be any good because queen here will be all right for white and uh, not rook g2 because then we just go queen takes rook checkmate as this rook is on f2 isn't it so upon rook f2 check okay we have king h1 okay and so I hope you can see the wee mechanism, I'll call it a mechanism, or the geography of what's going on here, the hidden things of this position. And so I'm going to show you it right now. And I hope I've got the main variations. So we've got rook f2 check, and then king h1. Now, we can bring the queen into check, okay? After, uh, but what do we do about rook g1? And realize that we can't. Uh, we can play queen at e1, check, because the queen is not attacking the square on e1, is it? It's not attacking that square. It's not, because... Of what? Because of this rook. This rook is in the way of the queen taking the queen and resulting in a draw. No, it's not. Is it? So, because it isn't. But this rook is. See? I'm just playing around a little bit here. Rook f2 is on f2. So we can go queen e1 check. There's no queen takes queen and sort of like see what we're doing so we go queen e1 okay check and then we have the the black rook is on f2 and the black queen is on e1 the rook is on g3 queen that is on king h1 the king is on h1 so then we have got queen e1 check okay and now what do we do about rook? Back to g1, just saying to the queen, well, go away. Or if rook f1 now, then we just go queen takes queen, rook takes queen, rook takes rook, winning for white. So what do we do with the, the drunken sailor? We've got something here. We trick a wee tactical trick which we really need to have here because otherwise it's going to look pretty bad this whole thing we've got a wee discovery tactical trick and so here it comes right now and I'm not going to spend too much longer on this but I'm going to show you the moves and I hope you found it the, the tactical trick is rook f2 check King H1. This is the best move for white. The computer is playing the best, best move or the opponent's move that they played at the board. 
Now we have queen e1 check. Now rook g1, rook g1, hope that didn't disturb the uh, playing field. We have rook g1 now. So can you find the next move? Because it's very easy to find. It wins something in two moves. And then I'm out of here. Yay. Get you off the playing field. So I hope you saw the whole thing to fruition is what I've asked for you to consider doing. Yeah, I can't tell you what to do. Is this move here. Watch this. Check. Ah, we've lost everything. No, we haven't. Queen takes queen. Bye.